All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Colleen McKinley. I'm the Director of Educational Partnerships and Programs here at Cerritos College. And my department uh, was fortunate enough to receive uh, this Be Stellar grant. So I'm joined with a couple of folks here that are going to introduce themselves, and then we'll get to the presentation. So Mono, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Emiliano Garcia. I go by Mono. I'm a former B seller intern. I currently work with Colleen at the uh, uh, education uh, was it educational partnerships and programs at Cerritos College, and I also currently work at the Space Center, which is the location of the base seller internship. And Jesus. Uh, yeah. So my name is Jesus Venegas. I'm also a former uh, B seller intern who now also work at uh, EPP at Cerritos College. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you both for being here. And um, just to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about this uh, evening or afternoon, it looks like evening with the weather out there, but um, we'll be going over the program as a whole, uh, what next steps are if you are interested in applying, and then we'll have some time <clears throat> for Q&A. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do the entire presentation. You can feel free to put uh, questions into the chat, but then we'll open it up for verbal questions when uh, we've stopped the recording. So what is Be Stellar? It is a partnership between Cerritos College, the Columbia Memorial Space Center, and of course, our paid interns that are part of the program. The reason that we have this opportunity for students is uh, based on the funding of a nas the National Science Foundation. So uh, back in 2019, we wrote a grant uh, in partnership with the Columbia Memorial Space Center uh, to bring this opportunity. And what we're doing is aiming to increase the capacity of um, Hispanic students uh, pursuing- Did I see It was weird. It was Sorry, we're gonna mute there. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean that students um, have to be Hispanic to participate in the program, but that was the reason that we went after this grant. And we want to support students who are pursuing STEM degrees um, and then also uh, reduce the diversity gap in the STEM work workforce. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the Columbia Memorial Space Center and uh, live from the Columbia Memorial Space Center is uh, Mano Garcia. Yes, yeah, so I'm currently in the theater room at the uh, Space Center. This is kind of where we hold uh, all sorts of reservations and things like that. There right there you see on the slide is a picture from outside the Space Center. Um, I see a couple familiar names in the chat who are former volunteers here at the center, but if you don't know and, and have never been, we're located in Downey, California. You see kind of on the map there, uh, that little square, it's where Lakewood Boulevard turns uh, a little skewed towards like Northeast, that little area. That's where the Space Center is. It's a lot of rich aerospace history back from the 20s when it was a runway, uh, 40s to be mass produced airplanes, World War II, uh, big, uh, lots of production for the Lunar Apollo program and also for the shuttle program. So that's why we're here. Um, it used to be a big uh, sort of area the size of Disneyland, we're kind of reduced down now to this one big or one fairly sized building. Um, you see the little shuttle there. Uh, we're in the works to get another building soon uh, towards the back of the building. It's going to be double the size of this one and house a shuttle. So some pretty fun stuff. Uh, the Space Center is open Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday through Saturday, I should say Tuesday there. Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Um, Yes, so we can kind of go to the next slide, talk about some uh, some things that we do at the center. So the center aims to uh, ignite a communi community of critical and creative thinkers through all sorts of different STEM um, programs, right? Uh, towards the bottom left there, you see an image of our resident mad scientist, Jared Head, performing a little fire demonstration in front of a, a crowd at our spooky science event. It's our Halloween event. Um, on the right, you see a former intern in the background. That's Gilberto Barro. Uh, he's doing a little water rocket activity. This is at our Rocket Fever event. Um, some of the people in the call right now also volunteered for that event. Uh, so lots of fun. 
Um, so yeah, there's a couple things we do. Here's a picture of our team. Um, you know, we're a big happy family here at the Space Center. There's lots of things that you would be able to participate if you got to volunteer here. We are a museum, but we also do lots of outreach programs. On the bottom left, that's at the Los Angeles State Historic Park. There's our director, um, the red shirt Ben Dicko with Bill Nye. It's such a great opportunity. We had 24,000 people uh, participate at our City of STEM event in LA. We used to host it here at the center in Downey. But uh, I think in 2022, we, 2022, we had 12,000 people here and it outgrew. So we need to shift. And in April, you guys would all be interns if you were interning here. We are uh, expanding it to a two-day event. So that's a big, big thing we're doing. Uh, towards the top right, that's after our Rocket Fury event. That's our whole crew, our whole team. There's a couple interns scattered in there. And at the bottom left, another opportunity is we were at uh, Comic-Con, Long Beach Comic-Con. We have our own little corner of that called Space Expo. So we got to do front programming there at uh, Comic-Con, Long Beach Comic-Con. You go next, some in-house events that we do are, or in-house programming that we do. We have a Girls in STEM Club, which kind of helps us unite women in STEM, uh, especially from a young age. So it's anywhere from eight to 18. So if that's an interest that you have, we really wanna work with you and your interests to kind of develop your skills, right? So that's uh, Girls in STEM. We do events for that. We had a drone day, Girls in STEM drone day, where we had professional drone people come. And there was like drone racing inside the building, uh, lots of drones outside, big drones, little drones. We have an early childhood program that aims at children two to five to kind of develop um, educational skills, especially for younger children. And towards the bottom right, we have uh, summer camps that we launch rockets. I had the great opportunity um, after working here to launch a six foot rocket in the middle of the desert that was all paid for through the Space Center. So, you know, this is a great place for you to be able to work at um, and grow your skills that you wouldn't have gotten uh, elsewhere. So before we go into the logistics of the internship, um, I wanted to pause for a second and just see, hey, Jesus, is there anything that you um, would want to share about your experience as an intern? Did you participate in some of these programs? Um, I think I had participated in the anniversary uh, event that we had um, when we had the different um exhibits and like experiments that we had uh, uh, I think me and Zeke were running the one where it was uh, fingerprinting like under the the black light I believe um, so yeah I know it was a really good experience just to be able to like see the um, the the students engage and want to learn more about what we were teaching and especially it being like a stem activity and most of them didn't really think about it. So really getting them like intrigued and asking questions about it was a really good experience. Great. Okay, so what does it mean uh, to be a paid intern? So um, if you are selected for this opportunity, uh, the paid time is at $15.50 an hour. And uh, you would be paid for orientation and training in any work that you do at the Columbia Memorial Space Center. Um, there is a mentoring component to this grant as well, where interns are paired with faculty, um, usually in small groups. So it's not just one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but a small group together with an SEM faculty member. Um, it's about 10 hours uh, throughout the semester, uh, and it just provides additional support support to our um, STEM students, but also in looking at um, the different things that might be involved in pursuing careers in STEM. The physical requirements of the job, uh, you need to be able to uh, work on a computer. And then uh, there aren't a lot of um, there isn't a lot of lifting, but of course, if you're going to be involved in activities at the Space Center, uh, you have to be able to stand for um, a longer period of time, uh, carry things like books and files, um, and, you know, nothing, we're not going to be having you move furniture, uh, but we, because you would be hired by Cerritos College, uh, and then paid to be at the Columbia Memorial Space Center, uh, we want to make sure that we're clear about what those physical requirements are. And the commitment to the internship, uh, it will begin in February. 
Uh, we've held one in-person info session, and then this is our virtual session that we will also uh, put on the website that is currently under construction. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the application process, but once the applications are in, um, we hope to have everyone selected and uh, onboarded uh, by February and have orientation in February, and then the internship will continue through August. The mentoring component, as I mentor, mentioned, you'll be spending about 10 hours uh, with your mentor in a group setting. Usually there's a two to three, sometimes four students within uh, or assigned to each mentor. And um, I'm going to have Jesus tell you a little bit about his experience with his mentor. Yeah, so definitely like the mentoring component of the Be Stellar internship was my favorite part just because I was able to get uh, feedback from someone that wasn't, that's an instructor at school, but um, kind of like a different type of role model, if that makes sense. Uh, being a biology major, um, my kind of perspective was kind of like open as to how I could approach becoming a teacher. And in this case, I had Professor Iwaz as my mentor and having her give me advice and guidance as to how I could approach being a biology major, but still incorporating becoming a teacher was really helpful. And the mentoring was my favorite part of the whole um, Be Stellar internship. And um, it was really good to be able to make like connections. And I still talk to her to this day um, so yeah, I would definitely, uh, say to take advantage of this part of the internship, uh, and ask questions, uh, pick their brains a little bit as to what uh, you want to do, whether it's, um, education or career wise, and they'll definitely be able to help you in both of those. All right. So I'm going to have Mono talk to you about why internships are important, especially since he experienced an internship. <laughs> yeah, so so this internship in particular and all internships in general are just super beneficial to your career, or your, your future career, right? For a lot of interns, it's their first job ever working outside of things like retail or food service. So it gets you set up out of your comfort zone uh, at something that's a little low risk, a little more manageable, um, less hours usually. Um, and so this is a great kind of first opportunity to get your feet wet in a, in a job path that you may not have considered otherwise or kind of hoping to, to get started, right? So um, next up we have, um, it, you're able to be, build your resume. So along with that, you can build skills that you won't have had otherwise. Things like communication skills, um, let's see, all those soft skills that you kind of don't have uh, working other places, this allows you to kind of build that different kind of professional experiences that help you stand out uh, when you're applying to jobs later on in your career. A lot of interns nowadays, or a lot of internships uh, tend to not be paid, but this one is. Uh, Colleen mentioned earlier that we were paid fifteen fifty an hour here at the center. Um, and often these kind of can lead to, to getting jobs here at the center, right? Um, I'd say about a third of the work staff here at the center that's kind of staying on for the long term uh, were originally either a volunteer or an intern. So when those kind of applications come around, it's good to have that experience that, um, uh, all while getting paid, right? Um, lastly, or not lastly, um, you're able to develop your professional network. A lot of people that I've met here, uh, I haven't, I wouldn't have gotten the chance to meet people that are mentors. Aside from the actual mentorship portion of the internship grant, um, I met a lot of people here. Uh, that I'm a volunteer coordinator here at the center, and my partner uh, Juan Colato, I wouldn't have gotten the chance to meet. He helped me a lot through my. Um, the building of my career. Oh, such a great mentor and a great person that really helped me along my path. Uh, there's also people who are former scientists. Jared Head, the guy who had the fire in his hands earlier, he's a former rocket engineer. So these are people that you wouldn't have had the chance to be around either that are roughly similar in age, generally maybe about 10, 20 years older than us. So it's kind of a great opportunity to get to meet people. Um, letters of recommendation, references and things like that you'll be able to add. And lastly, um, your GPA does not measure your work ethic. So no matter how good your grades are, uh, if you don't kind of come with those skills 
uh, to a, let's say you have an interview, um, it's kind of evident if you don't have those skills. So this will allow you to kind of develop your communication skills. Uh, and it really challenged me personally. I know that before I was an intern, I absolutely hated public speaking. Uh, I would get all sweaty and nervous. And this had definitely helped me a lot. Um, it definitely helped me grow as a person. There's a couple of reasons why internships are super important. So um, next, go ahead, where are you going to do the next steps? Sure. Yeah. So right here we have the QR code for the uh, internship application. I'd recommend you all go ahead, take your phones out and scan, uh, get that saved on your phone. Uh, I'll also be sending out an email to everyone who attended this uh, info session with the link so that you can apply some things to expect when you're applying. Take some time to really kind of develop your answers. Um, it's a simple Google form, so it's nothing crazy. Submission isn't crazy. Uh, we'll be needing your transcripts. Um, and that mm -hmm. is not, you don't need your, to buy your official transcripts and send them over. Your unofficial transcripts are okay. You also need things like uh, references, just two simple references, put their email, their contact info. Um, you'll later be able to find the application on the B seller website, but as C Colleen mentioned earlier, that's currently under construction. So um, the application deadline, the last day to apply is January 15th, which is a little less than a month from now. So you know, got to work a little hard to get that finished before then. It's about a month. Um, Mono, do you think you could put the link to the application in the chat? I can do that. So if you're on a computer, you can. Uh... So while Mono's doing that, um, let me explain um, what happens once you apply. So uh, Cerritos College, uh, with uh, in combination with the Space Center, will actually do the initial screening of the applications, and then we will select uh, a pool to be interviewed by the Columbia Memorial Space Center in late January. And then once interns are selected, they have to go through the HR process here at Cerritos College, and that's the variable. So it's difficult for us to say this is exactly when you would start because it's all going to depend, depend on the time it takes um, to be processed. The uh, HR process includes filling out a hiring packet. You also have to be fingerprinted with campus police. Um, and the city of Downey, uh, which technically runs the Columbia Memorial Space Center, uh, they will also require fingerprinting. Um, none of that will be at any cost to you, um, but just be aware that fingerprinting will happen twice. Um, you'll also have to provide for the college um, proof of a TB test that's been done within the last uh, three years. So. Uh, we will, once uh, we notify students um, that they've been selected, then uh, my department and Monica Castro will help you uh, through that process. Um, we sometime... Go ahead, Mona. Sorry, really quick. Uh, I know there's some former uh, Columbia Memorial Space Center volunteers here. You would have already gotten fingerprinted through the city of Downey if you were a former volunteer. So you wouldn't have to do that again because you're already in the system, right? And if you're a former, let's say, or you currently work for Cerritos College and you've already gone through that fingerprinting process, you wouldn't have to do both of them, right? It's either one of you. You just have to make sure that you have done it in the past. So, um, yes. So we sometimes get questions uh, from students about whether they are eligible to be hired within an internship. And so uh, along with the application that Mono sends, um, there will also be a link to an I-9 form. You do not need to complete this form. The reason that we are providing it is that on page three is a list of the documentation that is required um, or that could um, tell you whether you're eligible to be hired. Um, so if you have any individual questions about that, you, of course, can reach out uh, through the Be Stellar um, email. But we'll just provide that resource to you should you have any questions about uh, whether you can um uh, work within the internship. We get uh, a lot in the past, we've had students have questions about this either because they were undocumented or they were DACA or it could be that they're here on a student visa. And so um, we'll be able to help you along the way if you're selected. And that is the end of the formal presentation. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording should anyone want to. Um, ask questions verbally or